any plant can grow in a pot. Um, you know, we buy annuals in our pots and they look great all summer long and then they die and you buy them again. So that's, that's fine, but the only purpose they serve is to look nice. So you've got this beautiful plant and then it dies and then you spend another $50 next year and you buy another one and then it dies and over and over and over again. But if you can put a perennial in that pot and it lasts year after year, you save a ton of money. And if you can take the next step and make that perennial a native plant, now you've gone the extra step of having this little micro habitat in your garden or in your yard or at the front of your house or on your porch or wherever you want it to be. So it's a great way to bring nature really close to you where you want to see it. So there's um, like uh, I have three examples. The two on the ends are for sun and the one in the middle is a shadier variety. Um, and I just potted those maybe three weeks ago. I don't know, whenever Iris said, hey, let's do this. <laughs> you can set it down, they're heavy. Um, and I left the tags in them so you can kind of see what, um, what plants are in there. These are established plants. The plants that you guys are going to get are little plugs. You saw them on the tables there. They're small plants, but they're going to grow. So these plants here are probably a couple years old, probably two years old. The plants there are in their very first year. So your pots are going to look like this next year. Potting a plant, I always think about three things. You should always have three things in your pot. You should have a thriller, which is something tall, mm -hmm. a filler, which is something that will fill in or be wide, and a spiller which spills over the side, which is why I love phlox, because it always spills over the side. So we have two different colors of phlox today. We have pink and we have a blue, so you can do whatever works for you. I don't want to watch the line either. <laughs> so when you're thinking about your pots, if you, you may not want all that. That's a very busy pot. All of mine have three things in them. At least go for two things. That adds interest and structure to your pot. You could go with one thing, but then you've got just one full pot. And when I'm thinking of one thing for a pot, I usually think it's a shrub. That's what I like in the shrubs. Blueberries, the sh low bush blueberry, Vaccinium angustifolium, it's awesome in a pot. You can put it on your porch where you go out and have breakfast, pop a few blueberries in your cereal every morning, and you've got like an instant little buffet there. And the birds like the blueberries. And blueberry bushes have amazing fall color. So, it's also a great landscaping plant, not only for a pot, but you can put it in front of your house. It has little flowers that turn into the blueberries, so it's got a lot of interest in the spring, and then fall color. So it's a landscaping plant that nobody uses. Everybody thinks it's just an edible. So, yeah. Uh, are they, do the deer really like the blueberries too? Deer do like blueberries, and so do the birds, and okay. the chipmunks, and the squirrels, and you know, anybody else who's walking by. So, um, we also, there's no uh, organic matter in there, so there's no fertilizer in there. So today we are using ProMix, which is a, it's a mix. There's a little bit of uh, mycorrhiza in there, which is a fungus that attaches to the root and helps the plants bring up water and nutrients. Hmm. And there is a little bit of fertilizer in the soil mix. That's good for about three weeks or so. So the, after about a month, maybe once a month, you're going to want to fertilize them with a 10-10-10 or a miracle Grow or whatever you find at your garden shop. And that's what we do at the nursery. About once a month, I fertilize all the plants. And they, they love the not too much care. You just put it in a watering can, water it, and you're good. And that's just for containers. When you yeah, have these in your yard, you don't right. need to fertilize. Yeah, just for like containers. That. When you put them in your yard, if you decide at the end of the year, you know, I like the pot, but I don't want to wait till next year. I want to put it in my yard, or I think these are big enough, or I really like this. It's going to be great in that spot over there. You can transplant it in mid, early, mid-October, probably early October. And uh, once it's in your garden, it shouldn't need any care at all. You might want to cut it back a little bit or prune it. But as for fertilizer, all these plants have evolved here in our wonderful Virginia clay soil. And they know how to grow here. That's how they grow best. So you shouldn't need to add any sort of extra fertilizer to them. This is a grass. So I know you can tease the roots a little bit more. See, I'm, because that way they're going to spread. Otherwise, they're just going to stay in this shape. So just be gentle. Pull them out a little bit, and then you put them in your pot where you want them. And then you're going to pack the dirt in around them, so that's where you're going to need more dirt. Um, and plant them only as deep as the soil is. Don't plant them deeper up to their necks. Don't have their shoulders out of the ground. Plant them exactly where the soil is. And you've got to make sure that they're packed in there sort of tight, but you don't want the pot bulging. So that they have to have soil contact so the roots can get to the water and the nutrients that the soil holds. 
you pack it in firmly and then you're going to fill it up to where this, this is burn, which is very cool. It can get five, six foot tall. And I've got some over there. They look a little beat up because they were shipped to me, but trust them, they will be beautiful. And then in the middle, my filler is a wood aster, um, which I think this is probably the blue one or white one. Yep, white. it's a white wood aster and it blooms in the fall. It'll seed around a bit too. So if you don't want this seeding into your garden, cut the flowers off when they're all done. And then my spiller, I don't have any with today, but it's Mian's Mint, which is a part shade. And I do have a few spillers over there for shade. 